Hey, good morning creators and welcome to Highway Academy. In this video, I'm going to be talking about why you should be excited about Civil 3D 2021.1 20, and Infrarox 2021.1. 20, the last time I was this excited was in Civil 3D 2012 when they introduced multiple corridors in cross sections and catchment delineations. I think again in 2017 when Civil 3D introduced data shortcuts uh, for corridors. I mean, earlier before you had to do the corridors in different drawings, but when they introduced data shortcuts for corridor in 2017, that was a game changer. Most of the professionals I know still work with Civil 3D 2012 because it's stable and because it has most of the functionalities that they will need to execute a very good design. Civil 3D 2012 had some really nice functions in regards to importing of KMZs, importing of Google Earth images, though the Google Earth image was in black and white, but it gave you a number of functions that some of them were stripped away uh, as we went to Civil 3D 2013. You find out you could not uh, import a KML, you could not import a Google Earth image or a Google Earth terrain and mesh. So you find that as a result, some of these functions were removed and others were added. Over the years, the team at Autodesk has worked tirelessly to make sure they bring us newer and newer features. You find that some of the years, some of these features are more incremental than game changing, as earlier mentioned. So you find that from Civil 3D 2013 to 2016, a number of features were introduced, but most of them were in regards to alignment levels, uh, improvement of profile uh, pressure pipes, uh, target through XREFs, just to mention a number of the few features. While in contrast, when you look at 2017 and 2018, a number of features were introduced. Uh, as earlier mentioned, data shortcuts for corridors were introduced. Uh, we basically had an introduce of plan plan. So you could have two plans rather than having a plan and profile, or you could have a Profile, profile. I mean, this was a highly high demanded feature at the time. And the number of features they introduced again in 2017 and 2018 was offset, offset profiles, uh, connected alignments. And these are things that made some of our workflows quite very easy. I felt that 2019 and 2020 had a lot of improvements, but most of the improvements were geared towards rail and rehabilitation. So you find that most of the features that have come over the years are favoring different kind of fields of expertise. But since we're at Highway Academy, we're mainly focusing on some of the features that help us design highways. Though uh, in 2019, Civil 3D introduced back a feature they had removed in 2012. That was the ability to export a KMZ into Civil 3D without a plugin. In mid-April of 2020, this is a number of months after the coronavirus outbreak, Civil 3D introduced uh, Autodesk purchased Project Explorer from 3 a.m. I mean, I have used Project Explorer, I think, since version one, but then I think I quit using it, I think, around version two. It hadn't yet, like, really uh, got most of the features I wanted. So I was really quite excited when I found out that uh, Autodesk had purchased this piece of software. And I really wanted to see what Autodesk is going to do with this. So in that regard, uh, checked out uh, Autodesk announced Civil 3D 20.1, 20, 20 and this was one of the features that was added. And the, this video, I'm going to exp this is one of the reasons why you should basically be excited. And basically, just to demonstrate, I'm going to just uh, go to my computer and just explain to you uh, why I feel this is amazing. There's some other features that have been added in Civil 3D 2021. 2020.1 and also in Forex 2020.1 20, 20 but I feel uh, these are the reasons why I'm quite excited. So uh, I just have here drawing uh, just showing uh, two cases. Uh, so here we just have basically a civil 3D drawing just showing uh, a clover leaf interchange and the power of uh, Project Explorer. Now, for those of you who don't know, to access Project Explorer is you have to go to the Autodesk top app 
make sure you're signed in. Uh, I think all applications. Yeah, you should go to my products and tools, scroll down all the way to the bottom. There's Autodesk Project Explorer. It's basically for Civil 3D 2020 and 2021. I think this is very good. Okay, uh, so you click install and the project will be installed. Now you find that when you open up Civil 3D, uh, Project Explorer will be located in basically the add-in sections. So this is the add-in sections. And uh, to launch Project Explorer is you just click launch Project Explorer. Now if it's your first time, Project Explorer will ask you to sign in uh, with your credentials to, uh, to check the license you have and to make sure everything is working good. So I think that's very good. Now, uh, Project Explorer is a tool that would allow you to, uh, what I love about it is it allow, it's like the prospectus tab, but in a much more advanced way. So you can look at a number of things in one view. As so for example, uh, I'm gonna make the Project Explorer window a little bit smaller. Uh, okay, so then I have my drawing here. So uh, there are cases whereby if you get a drawing, I'm going to close the two space. Um, you find that sometimes when you get a drawing, uh, you don't know uh, which alignment is where and uh, what items are where. So you'd find that if you just click hold down control and you click on an alignment, it basically highlights where that alignment is. Uh, for example, CS1 is here. Uh, if I if I select, uh, if I hold down control and select CS1, it shows where that alignment is. CS3, it shows where that alignment is, and basically CS4. Now, as I'm selecting all these, I can basically have a quick look in regards to what profile is there. Now, I can select what surface I can compare it with, and uh, for this case, I'm going to just look at the OGL. And with this, I can quickly have a look at uh, the, uh, the profile and basically the alignment. And this gives a lot of uh, strengths in regards. So when you, when you have kind of uh, three windows, uh, the top window will show uh, the main utility graphically, then the other will show um, in regards, if you're looking at the top bar shows the different items. So we have alignments, we have assemblies, we have corridors, we have point groups, we have surfaces, we have a number of feature lines, parcels, pipe networks, and all that. So when you have all these features in the drawing, you can access them by just a click. And I find that really good rather than having to go into the two space, click drop downs and all that. So uh, I can easily look at my alignments in this drawing and the profiles, and I can easily change the styles in case I want to. So for example, this is the style for this. If I double click it, I can easily change it to something that I would really love. I find this is very, very time saving. So you can quickly check even uh, a number of things in regards to the profile. So uh, the number of tabs here and they can highlight different attributes of the element you've selected. So, so for example, here we have uh, the alignment. So you can look at a number of things, for example, the radius. Um, in regards to the radius, you can look at uh, the coordinates and all that. And uh, if you just look at basically the alignment entities, so you can look at the curves, the straights, that are the different entities that make up the alignment. And that regard, you can also now look at the profile. And the profile, you can look at the number of attributes that make up a profile. You can look at the grades, the gradient. You can look at uh, the K values that have been assigned to this profile. The basically the different K values that have been used, the elevations and all. Now you can also look at the different assemblies that are in the drawing. Uh, that is say if here we have a number, we have a bridge, we have this. So the beauty with this is you can access all your assemblies from here and you can make a number of changes to the assemblies. For example, if I want to change the, the width of the assembly to 3.5 meters, for example, for the lane, I can change this. And the power of this is amazing because I can make changes to a number of items without really having to look at them. So for example, let's go to the corridors. Uh, I can easily, for example, I don't know what C1 is. Uh, I'm going to compare it with the top surface. Uh, let's, uh, so I don't know what C1 is or C2, okay? So, uh, but I need to see uh, what I'm looking at. So all I have to do is just uh, hold down control and click. And it's going to highlight basically the corridor that we're looking at. Or C2 or C3. You see, eh? Or C4. It's it's very powerful in regards to the way it uh, handles uh, different 
uh, items in this regard. So I feel uh, this is very good. If you know, if you know the trouble of Civil 3D looking at cross sections, Civil 3D has a lot of issues in regards to uh, analysis of cross sections. You either have to use the cross section editor, which I find is very unreliable. It's quite heavy sometimes, it's quite very slow and bulky. So you need something quite very light. And so they introduced a tool here where you can look at basically a cross section and uh, the different way it transitions over. You can quickly look at uh, a road cross section and you can quickly run through the different uh, changes and how this affects the whole project. This is very good during review times. I find this is a very huge time saver. So you, you can have just quickly run through the changes and say, ah, change 85, this is what's happening to the cross section. We're having basically feel and uh, we're having extents of roughly around 15 meters either side. And this is very powerful and very good. However, I, I still feel that there's a disadvantage. They limit us to only one surface. So if you have a project where you have so many surfaces, like I have a second project here, uh, where we we had so many surfaces so uh this is a project did uh, we did back some time back in the day before i think 20 even 20 2015 i think and what happened was we had this kind of a main line with a number of uh alignments that were coming off basically off the main line and the challenge we had is if you have this kind of section you would have a number of surfaces that you want to look at. So what we do is we'd get a sample line and add different surfaces. And then I would create a cross section that's showing me what's basically happening. So if you look at the cross section here, uh, you can see that uh, you can look at the different surfaces and how they're affecting the main line. Now you can see just changing the they just to go to another station you saw how long that took it really took some time and i felt that was very annoying during the time of designing the project because my supervisor at the time really wanted to look at all the different cross sections how are they lining up what are the levels what are we off by which is higher can we lower this and at the time i had to generate different cross sections output them uh, try to use the sample line and the problem sample line was very annoying like you see every time i change a change that's one two three four five six <laughs> if you have a number of feature lines in the drawing uh, you can also do the same uh, it can show the different feature lines you can change the feature line styles as Ali highlighted i find this very good uh, whether you can do two at the same time uh, i don't think so so you can only change one feature line at a time which i feel is a limitation sometimes you want to change six feature lines that are being created and you want to give them maybe a different style uh, you can basically you can't i think change the elevation that's maybe the current the current challenge you still have to go back to elevation editor now i feel there's some loopholes that i feel autodesk should add one autodesk should add labels i don't think there's a way of seeing labels uh all you can see here is just the text i can't see the super elevation here the gradient of the carriageway the width so i would love if autodesk could um the team at Autodesk that's working on uh, Project Explorer, please add labels, allow us to add multiple surfaces uh, in regards to uh, analyzing. I feel this is uh, would be very good. Now, if you have parcels in your drawings, if you have surfaces, now you have so many surfaces in this drawing. And sometimes you want to change the styles of the surfaces without going into the tool space. You can always do that. And you can see this is what happens when you have loads of surfaces in one drawing and they're all just handling one one bit uh, finally this is amazing in regards to uh the way uh this exports reports now reports is going to be a separate uh video which i'll make in regards to this if you're a person who struggles with exporting reports in regards to the different attributes of the alignments uh, the vertical elements the points Civil 3D is amazing. Uh, Project Explorer is amazing in regards to how it exports. This is not a detailed video in regards to how to use all these different attributes. I mean, you can go to uh, type in YouTube Project Explorer. You go to 3AM's page and there, there are lots of videos showing basically how to use uh, this. I thought I know another thing they introduced in Civil 3D uh, or 22. 
20 was the bridges so you could basically add bridge structures uh, that's something we've been struggling a lot so for example here you want to show there's a bridge and you don't know how to do it you either have to rely on the team that worked on the structures to come up with something so sometimes you have a preliminary design and need to know how it works so if you are uh, right now in Infrarox 20 Point one. I'm, I'm really struggling with that. They've introduced some really nice things. Now here I've decided to import in, I just got the IMX drawing that I exported. So one of the features they introduced in Infrax 2021 is exporting very complex corridors. Uh, before we've been uh, really struggling to get the corridors in and now it can export very complex corridors. Now I haven't really cleaned this up but I've exported, I can basically make this better but it can export very complex corridors right now that I really like. And uh, you can basically start adding the features that they've always been talking about. That is to say, you can add uh, the bridge, like here I've added a bridge. Um, um, you can add basically a bridge to uh, indicate how far you want the bridge to extend. And the beauty with this is I feel it's very powerful. So, uh, and the bridge components are quite based on like some of the professional standards. So if you're a highway person and you want to have basically a quick preliminary design, you can say, okay, you know what? Uh, I'm going to have my bridge uh, spanning from there to here. And then, okay, I made my bridge span from there to there. And then now what you can do is, uh, because I have that as the bridge section, um, I'm going to click away and select this, select my bridge. And then what you can do is you have something called published civil structures. Now, uh, this is helping you, uh, this is going to really help you export that back to civil 3D. You can also create a spreadsheet. Uh, this is a spreadsheet that will basically show a number of attributes in regards to the elevations and all. Um, so you can create a new one. Uh, so it's going to ask you, uh, what do you want to name it? I'm going to name it as backup. I'm going to look for, I'm putting this structure. So I'm going to just put in Project Explorer. And let me just put it on the desktop and I'm going to name it Bridge IMX. And I'm going to create, okay? So the beauty with this is uh, it's going to export out the bridge structure. Okay, now it has finished exporting. So now I can go back to my drawing, InfoRx open model uh, so i'm going to go to my desktop go out quickly pick up that bridge open uh, i've set the coordinate system this is something new that i love about infrarox 2020.1 we can set a default coordinate system for our country you know before we had to use the lls coordinate system which i found quite very frustrating i had to always uh, make sure i convert everything of mine from my current country uh, coordinate system to LS, then importing infrarox and get the boundaries and export everything out. And there's a risk of having these uh, offsets. Uh, now we don't have to. So I'm like now open model. So it's going to import in the entities uh, that I've showed there. So uh, as you can see, uh, we now have the bridge and the bridge has been properly laid out in our drawing to kind of as show the extents of basically the design. Now there's the surface, which I'm not so interested so much. Uh, but um, you can see we basically have a quick bridge section that's laid out and this can be detailed by basically the structures team. So I find this is really very good if you're, uh, if you're working on projects whereby uh, information is quite needed in regards to the spans, in regards to preliminary design. Uh, I, I find this really very powerful and really very good. So I hope to see you in the next video and make sure you tune in um, two things. One, make sure you tune in for our next video. It's basically engineers reacting to a uh, bullet train in Africa. So the idea was if there, were, if there was a conception of having a bullet train throughout Africa and maybe connecting to a number of countries like Europe and whatever, would it be something we should do? Is it feasible? Is it a good idea? Um, so a number of people who came up and we're having basically a reaction in regards to that. Two is a number of you asked for my script in the previous video, so I made it free on highwayacademy.com.
net. So visit the website, you'll be able to get the scripts for free. Uh, just make sure you just sign up. Uh, just uh, type in the, your email address and the download link will be sent to your email, the script in the previous. Otherwise, a um, number of you also asked me to have mentorship and some of you wanted to learn junction design. So make sure you stay tuned to the channel. Uh, we're currently having a number of professionals joining uh, the website and they are creating courses. So we have a number of courses coming out for you. Uh, so just stay tuned to the channel and I hope to see you then. Be safe, stay safe. Yeah.